Hello, Namaskar viewers. I am Sanjeev Pandya, welcoming you to this week's edition of the Business Talk with AJ right here on ITV Gold. This weekly show brings you all that you need to know about business and business-related tax matters as well. Because if you are in, if you are in the business, and as we categorize the businesses that you are in, and what are the pros and cons of the businesses, also tax matter comes along with those businesses also. So that's all. All we discuss in this show called the Business Talk with AJ, brought to you by Sai CPS Services, a full-fledged professional accounting firm located in the state of New Jersey. Multiple locations, but they can assist you no matter where you are in the USA. They are professional. They are one of the leading CPA firms here in the state of New Jersey. They can be reached at 908-380-6876 or visit SciCPSServices.com for more information. With that note, I'd like to welcome Mr. AJ Kumar of SciCPS Services, MBA, CPA with SciCPA for over 25 years. Good to have you, sir. Thank you, Sanjeevji. Thank you for the kind introduction. Sure. Very good. Now, the introduction, of course, when there is an introduction, we always look into it if there is a gain or loss. And if there is a gain, what is a gain and how much is the gain, short-term gain, long-term gain? I'm leading this conversation into the topic of today's business talk with AJ, which is capital gains and taxes related to capital gains. Everyone loves capital gains. Absolutely. Sanjeev. But no one likes to pay taxes on capital gains. No, you're 100% right. It's not how much you made. At the end of the day is how much you saved. Mm. I mean, we see a lot of cases not knowing any better where people have lesser capital gain and end up paying more taxes, more than the capital gain. And you wonder out loud, how is that practically possible? And we'll give you some examples where those things can happen to you. So make sure you stay tuned. We'll give you the difference between the short-term capital gain, the long-term capital gain, strategies to avoid taxes or defer taxes and the pitfalls that you want to avoid, the mistakes that you, that you do not want to be making when it comes to capital gain taxes. Absolutely. So now, you know, as you all know, viewers, capital gains is a profit realized from the sale of an asset. If it's more than one year, it's a long-term gain. And if it's less than one year, it's a uh, short-term capital gain. So there are various things also we're going to find out from AJ. So AJ, if there is a long-term capital gain, the taxes are less than a short-term capital gain. Is that true? Uh, absolutely. So at a high level, uh, the, sh the long term capital gain taxes are almost half of what you end up paying for the short term capital gain. In many cases, long term capital gain taxes could be zero, depending on your situation, depending on how much money you are making. The idea here is for a short term capital gain, meaning less than one year, as Sanjeevji explained, your income decides the tax rate, meaning the short term capital gain is considered as regular income. The regular income tax varies from 10% to 37%. So in the worst case scenario, just for the IRS only, your short term capital gain taxes could be as much as 37%. The highest tax rate for the long term capital gain is 20%. So the long term capital gain taxes varies from 0 to 20% depending on your income. Uh, so it could be 0%, 15% uh, or 20% if you have a married filing joint. And let's say your income is less than 553,000, which is pretty high number considerably, then your tax rate are 15%. If it's more than that amount 553,000, and it changes every year, Sanjeevji, mm. with the CPI increase. Yes. Then the worst case scenario, if you are a millionaire, good luck to you, <laughs> then your tax rate is 20% for long term and 37% for the short term. Okay. All right, so that's, so that's the uh, long-term capital gain and uh, short-term capital gain. What about dividends? How does dividend play um, you know, in, in the capital gain category? It's a very similar concept. The dividends can be of two types, qualified dividend and non-qualified dividend. The way you want to understand, if the dividend is paid uh, on an investment that was there for more than one year, then qualified dividend has lesser tax rate. The concept is very, very similar. Long-term capital gain versus short-term capital gain is qualified dividend versus non-qualified dividend. If you are investing money into an asset, into a company, and they are giving dividend every year, then more than likely it's a non-qualified dividend, regular income tax rate. 
if it's a qualified dividend, meaning they are holding on to this uh, earning for n number of years and distribute part of the earning as dividend, then typically it's qualified dividend, which is taxed at a much lower rate as opposed to non-qualified dividend. Okay. Now, you know, um, this information obviously helps. Is there a category called unrealized gains? Uh, absolutely. So, the concept over there is realized gain versus unrealized gain. If you have, let's say, take an example, you, have, you invest money into the stock market. You bought something for $100. The value for this stock is $500. You haven't sold it yet. So, the $500 is not in your pocket yet. Tomorrow, it could become $450 or $550. So, you have the gain on paper, but it's not realized yet. And this concept is referred as unrealized gain. As of the rules today, unrealized gains are not taxable. You pay the taxes only on the realized gain. Once you sell something, then you see how much we bought it for, how much we sold it, and the difference, depending on how long you kept this asset, less than one year or more than one year, you have short term or long term capital gain accordingly. Okay, so now you know. Um, after that information, can you go a little bit deeper into the 2024 tax year rates for the long-term gains for the individuals' personal income and the short-term gains for individuals' in their personal income as well? Uh, absolutely, 100%. So the way you want to look at it, the short-term capital gain taxes varies from 10% to 37%, depending on your income tax bracket. More income you have higher the tax rate you end up paying as opposed to the long term capital gain taxes that varies from 0 to 20 percent 0 15 20 and uh, the 20 percent is only applicable if your income is more than 553,000 married filing joint again these numbers keeps changing every year they increase with the cpi increase but the idea is if you are making more than 550,000 553,000 then you have highest long-term capital gain taxes, which is 20%, the highest potentially short-term capital gain taxes could be as much as 37%. Okay. Anything else that you'd like to add to it? I mean, listen, my, the question comes to my mind is that how would you advise your potential client uh, if it's a certain property, let's just pick on real estate because stock market is something different, right? Real estate. How would you advise your client whether they should hold on to that property for more than a six months or almost a year in order to save taxes? Or would you advise that it's not worth it? Let's just sell it, whatever profit comes in. Even if it's a short term, let's go ahead with it. You know, what's the criteria you use to do that? Well, it's not that bad. It's very, very simple. So the, the basic theory is that taxes cannot be the deciding factor for your business. When you talk about selling or buying real estate, you want to focus on the business. You want to focus on the real estate angle of it. Are you expecting the prices to go up or do you have a great deal now that you may not have tomorrow? If you have such a situation, then you want to focus on the business first, tax later. We'll figure out how do we avoid, defer or minimize taxes. If you are selling something at 11 and a half months later, then it may, may not be a bad idea to talk to the buyer to say if you can delay the closing for another two weeks. That's a good idea. That makes sense. That's being tax savvy. But if you have a good business deal and you can sell something in three months, then sell it. Tax is a part of uh, the whole equation. If you can make a dollar, if the government wants something out of it, you are still making something. Uh, so business comes first. You don't want to be are leading the business based on the tax angle. But at the same time, if you know the rule, if you understand the concept, then you wouldn't be, be closing a deal at 11 and a half months later. You know that by delaying it two weeks, I can save 15% taxes. All right, so what you're saying is that you leave complete tax angle out there. You just look at it that this is what the offer I'm getting it. And if that offer is worth enough, obviously, to sell the property at that price, and even if it's a sacrificing a little more tax rate for it, it's still worth it. So you would, so, so you would prefer to have that business deal come in and business, sign it. You're 100% right. I think business comes first. Yes. Except you have the business angle to it, but you are doing it at 11 months later mm. or just about 11 and a half months later. So knowing the tax rule, recognizing the tax situation, 
helps you make an intelligent decision. It is possible to delay the closing for two weeks. It may not be possible. The buyer may not agree to, to delay the closing for six months. Mm. But if you can delay the closing for a week, two weeks, three weeks, and it saves you taxes, knowing is the key here. But business comes first. All right. Business comes first. And that's really good to know in this first half of the business talk with AJ. Business comes first. And at the same time, ad break also comes first because that's important. So we'd like to thank uh, sponsors for that. Also remember the business talk with AJ brought to you by Science CPS Services, a professional accounting firm in the state of New Jersey can help you with bookkeeping, taxes, and the business matters, virtu virtual CEO, virtual CFO, and even for IRS audit, their on-hand trained CPS will definitely help you out. Give them a call at 908-380-6876. We'll be right back after this message. Welcome back to the second half of the business talk with AJ. This week we are talking about capital gains. AJ is giving us all the information that we need to know about capital gains, long-term capital gains, short-term capital gains, and uh, you know tax angle with uh, with the typical capital gain category. So there's a lot more to know, and we are actually finding out from AJ. Now, before we move forward, just want to let you know that we are now in the second week of October and October 15th is the tax deadline for the personal income tax returns. Whoever filed the um, extension, it's time for them to file this away October 15th, correct? Absolutely. So for the personal taxes yes. and for the corporate taxes, C Corporation, the tax filing deadline is 15th October. So if you file an extension, Make sure you get the taxes filed by the due date. Right. Make sure you get everything done next week because 15th falls on Tuesday and it will be Tuesday, so Tuesday. So don't wait till Tuesday. And in case if you have filed an extension and wondering that who should go to to get the taxes done, Science CPA Services believes in doing taxes right regardless of refund or to pay to Uncle Sam. But do taxes right, and that's what Science CPA Services and they have built their reputation on that motto as they believe and they do taxes right. Their on hand, knowledgeable, experienced CPAs will help you, will guide you in the right direction. So it's not too late to give them a call at 908 380 6876 or visit their website, which is sciencecpsservices.com. Continuing this capital gain conversation this week, now after learning the rates for the long term and the short term and dividends and whatnot, now let's look into the tax angle and um, you know, deferred strategies, how you can defer taxes and what you can do. That's what we're going to find out from Absolutely, AJ. Absolutely, Sanjeevji. So, in the first half, we were talking about the short term, yes. long term, qualified, mm. non-qualified. But at the end of the day, how do I minimize taxes? How do I defer taxes? How do I pay? Not that we don't want to pay the fair share of taxes, but anything that can be avoided is a good deal. It's, again, it's not what you made, it's what you saved that matters. So there are several strategies, Sanjeevji, when it comes to uh, differing, minimizing capital gain taxes. So, uh, and it also depends on how the capital gain taxes are being coming across. Mm. Is it coming through real estate sale? Is it coming through business sale? Is it coming through stock sales? So depending on your situation, the advice that we are giving is general advice. In your situation, not everything will make sense. So you have to work with an accountant, work with a CPA who knows what they're doing to make sure they can give you a specific advice that makes sense in your case. So take an example of the real estate uh, mm. capital gain taxes. Mm. You bought a real estate 10 years ago for $100,000 and now it's million dollar. So it's a clearly long term, 10 years, which is more than one year. Your capital gain seems to be 900,000 in this example, assuming there is nothing else going on. So how do you minimize this 900,000? Uh, so the worst case scenario, depending on how much income you have, you are looking at 20% federal taxes, 180,000. What can you do to avoid taxes that are arising from a long term capital gain type of situation? In that case, you can look 1031 exchange. That's a very, very common strategy mm. used for real estate type of situation. Mm. The idea is you are not selling the property. You are not selling the asset. You are exchanging the asset. There are certain rules that you have to follow through, meaning the next property that you are buying has to be identified within 45 days. The closing has to happen within six months. 
you cannot be taking money home the money must remain in the attorney's escrow account so there are certain rules around it but if you plan it right if you plan it properly especially if your plan is to reinvest this money anyway 1031 exchange is a very good idea to defer the the taxes in this type okay. of situation. All right. So 1031 now is there, um, how do I say this? 1031 is it for everybody or is it for just those who are having substantial capital gains? Well, if you, it depends on your situation. Mm. It's, in theory, it's for everybody. Okay. But depending on your situation, let's say if you sold something for a million dollar in our example, mm. but you want to use half million for some other purpose. Correct. You have a marriage coming up, you have some other loans, you have to buy a car, you, you are trying to buy a business, a loan romat. In that case, you may not want to do 1031 exchange. Even Correct. though you qualify, because one of the conditions for the 1031 exchange is you have to use the whole proceed into the next investment, meaning you cannot be taking money home. In that case, even though you qualify for it, it may not make sense in your That's what in, I want to make sure. That's why I'm because I remember reading it somewhere that you know 1031 is not for everybody, even though it's a useful, but not for everybody. That's right. All right. So now, um, is there a timeline or is there a you know like the property anything attached with 1031 conditions besides the one you mentioned? Well, it has to be like kind property mm. and investment property sold for an investment. You cannot buy a primary home. You cannot buy a business by selling a property. I mean, it mm. has to be a like kind property. So, and this is tip, this is only used for real estate type of uh, properties, real estate type of sales. On the other hand, if you have stock sales, then there are other strategies. If you do, your capital gain is coming through stock market, then you have to be concerned about the wash sale rule, and we'll explain you what it is, or M to M, depending on how frequently you do it. Is it a one-time situation or do you do it every day? Meaning you are a day trader. Uh, you have a job and you spend considerable amount of time in day trading. Then you may want to consider mark to market election where you pay the taxes based on whatever the market value is. So M to M mark to market election is a very good option for day traders. So look, look into it, explore it. Or the other thing, if you are not a day trader as such, but you have certain gains every so often, then understand the wash sale rule. The rule uh, at a high level is that you cannot be replacing the same security 30 days prior or 30 days later by selling a security. You cannot sell Apple and buy Google next day. Otherwise, the loss in Apple will not be considered as legitimate loss because you did not really replace the asset. It's the similar asset. That's called wash sale rule. It's within 61 days. You cannot be replacing the same security, similar uh, stock, hmm. by selling one stock and buying it. You cannot just re recognize those losses. Okay. These are good points to know. Very, very, very good points to know, especially someone who is heavily into investment, especially real estate investment and, and uh, 1031, whether they should use or not or whatnot. All right. There's another section called section 1202 absolutely absolutely this is for the you know qualified small business stock something uh, uh, yeah, absolutely yeah. Yeah. what so, can you tell us about that section 1202 100% so depending on the capital gain where the capital gain is coming from you have to use a strategy that applies to that section so as we discussed real estate we talked about 1031 exchange if you, your gains are coming from the stock market, then what? You look at mark to market. You look at the wash sale rule, meaning you have to be looking at where the gains are coming from. So 1202 is a section that is applicable when you invest money into a corporation, in a C corporation. Similarly, you have installment sale. So take a step back. Where are the capital gains coming from? Did you sell a real estate? Is it coming from the stock market? Did you sell the business? Did you invest into a corporation? It, it became a lot of money now. So if you sold the business, for example, then you, you invested some money into the business. A lot of time is your sweat and hard work that created something out of nothing. So the cost is very low, but now the business is worth something. Business is worth a million dollar. When you sell this business, now you have long-term capital gain taxes. How do you avoid it? The key here is how are you selling it? Are you selling it immediately or are you selling it on an installment? Meaning, give me out of million dollar, give me 250,000 now and give me 250 every year. 
you don't have to pay the taxes on the whole million immediately. If you are selling your business in installment, meaning I get some money now, some money later, you are only expected to pay taxes on the money that you receive today. We had hmm. a client, a new client who came to us, and a real example actually. The client sold the business for $1.7 million. It was They were supposed to get it over three years. So the, in the first year, they only got $600,000. Their actual tax liability was more than the amount of money they received. Oh. They did not realize it. Hmm. The accountant did not understand the whole picture. It's a new client for us. And they uh, came up with a large bill. So we did not get anything. We did not even get the money. Hmm. But our tax bill is higher than the amount of money we received because they did not consider the installment sale around it. So if you have a sale of business, you consider the installment sale. Similarly, section 1202 specifically talks about investing into corporation where you have this uh, QSBS, Qualified Small Business Corporation, QSBC. Uh, the size of the corporation cannot be more than 50 million. You have to keep the money for at least five years in there. 80% uh, of the asset have to be active. There are certain rules around it. But the idea is if you invest into a local domestic corporation and keep your money for n number of years, at least five years, you can avoid paying the capital gain taxes on that money. Again, the intent here is there are several uh, options around it. When it comes to the capital gain taxes, 1031 exchange, mark to market, wash sale rule, installment sale, 1202, there are several options around it and not everything is going to be applicable to everybody. You have to see where the capital gains are coming from, what income tax bracket you fall in and then accordingly find a strategy that fits you, that makes sense in your situation. Okay, interesting. All right, so continuing this conversation as we want to cover as many topics possible for under capital gain. Section 83B, which allows the taxpayer, you know, to, to, to pay the tax on a fair market value. What can you say about Section 83B? Section 83B is again a very, very specific situation. When you're investing money into certain stocks, typically, or certain companies, which you are expecting to go public, where you are expecting the value of these stocks is going to multiply. At that time, you make this 83B election. And there are certain rules around it, where the, the whole idea is your cost basis is going to be considered as the market value as opposed to the invested value. And you can avoid up to 10%, depending on how long you keep it, of the, the capital gain taxes when you have 83B election. But again, the idea is depending on your situation, if the gains are coming from real estate, if the gains are coming from stock market, if the gains are coming from a C corporation investment, if the gains are coming from installment sale, if the gains are coming from because you are an angel investor trying to invest money into a company that's going to grow faster, you have to look at your situation. You have to see where the gains are coming from and then see what strategy makes sense in your situation. Okay, very interesting. Now I think we have covered almost all the topics related to capital gains, short term, long term capital gain. Is there anything that you'd like to add in the end? In the end, I just want to re-emphasize business comes first. Tax is a necessary evil. You have to pay taxes, you have to pay taxes. Focus on the business. If you are making a dollar, paying 20 cents is okay. Don't lose the whole dollar in order to, to, to save the 20 cents. All right, so if you have a good offer coming in, take that because that's important, right? As they say, Absolutely. as they say, there's a famous saying in the um, original Godfather movie, make me an offer that I can refuse. All right, so do that first and then figure out, you know, how to pay your taxes or what are the ways that you can reduce your tax liability. And for that, you're definitely going to need Science CPA Services advice and their suggestion. They can guide you in the right direction. Also, remember, as we are approaching towards the end of the year, if you have filed your taxes, everything is cool, no problem. But now, for the next year, you need to look into right now where you can invest money to reduce your tax liability for the next year. And that's the time right now between now and end of December. Science CPA services expert advisors can guide you where to invest your money so that way you pay less taxes. And this is a very important thing because a lot of people go there in January and say, where can I invest? It's too late. You, it must be done before end of December. So don't wait till the end of the year. Do give them a call right now, 908 380 
6876 or visit com. With that note, we come to an end of today's episode of Business Talk with AJ, highlighting capital gains tax matter. And for that, we thank Mr. AJ for his guidance and suggestions. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you, Sanjeev. Until we meet again, same place, same time, I am Sanjeev Pandya, wishing you all happy and tax-free days ahead. So long. Thank you.